Okay, welcome everybody. <laughs> um, so we're just going to do a quick introduction to everyone who's um, talking today. Uh, I'll start uh, with myself. Uh, my name is Adam Quayle. I'm one of the joint artistic directors of Box of Tricks Theatre Company. Um, my preferred pronouns are he, him, and um, I am a white uh, 30 something uh, male uh, with uh, thinning brown hair, salt and pepper beard, and thick rimmed glasses. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Hannah Tyrrell Pinder. I'm the other joint artistic director of Box of Tricks. Um, I'm a 30 something white woman with red hair and thick framed glasses as well. I'm also going to introduce Alex, who's doing our BSL interpretation today. Oh, and apologies, my preferred pronouns are she and her. Now I will introduce Alex. Um, Alex is a white male in a black jumper against a blue background. So if you do want BSL interpretation today, he will be doing that for you. So He's you your man. Him. Okay, and if we can, uh, if Donna from Sky Studios, if you could introduce yourself next. Hi, my name's Donna. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm a script executive for Sky Studios based in Leeds. Um, I'm uh, a white woman, mid thirties with blonde hair. Fantastic, thank you. And Ella. Hello, um, I'm Ella. Um, I am 36. Um, I had to think then, that's how I was. <laughs> um, I'm a woman, uh, dark hair, um, tiny eyes, chubby cheeks. Um, I'm um, a writer and um, my preferred pronouns are she and her. Great, and David? Hello, um, I'm David Judge. Um, I'm a man. My preferred pronouns are him and he. Um, I'm a poet, actor, writer of things. Um, I'm a first generation light brown Mancunian in my 30 somethings, but I look 20 somethings. Um, my hair's just starting to curl and I have a brick wall behind me. Fab, thank you. I'm Max. Hi everyone, I'm Max Emerson. I'm the associate producer for Box of Tricks and my pronouns are he, him. I am wearing a black polo shirt. I have thick rim glasses, a moustache, a bit of a goatee and I am uh, white in my mid-twenties. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, um, first of all, I just kind of wanted to give a quick introduction uh, to Box of Tricks and um, and talk a little bit about how uh, all of this has kind of come about, essentially. So Box of Tricks is a, um, a new writing theatre company based in Manchester. Um, we will have been going for 15 years next year, is it? Um, and uh, we've been based in Manchester for the last eight of those years. Um, we... Uh, for us, it's it's a, a, what we pride ourselves on is kind of championing writers and empowering them to tell the stories that they want to tell. Um, so during lockdown, kind of uh, we we started to kind of re-examine how we could best support writers at this kind of uh, strange time, um, and we came up with the idea of the Playmakers Network, um, which is something that's been kind of bubbling away for a long period, um, but actually had one of the kind of perverse things of COVID, I guess, was that actually everybody leaning into digital suddenly made it a lot more feasible for us to connect with writers right across the North and for us to talk to um, and connect with writers in a way that just wasn't feasible without, you know, people having to get expensive trains over mm -hmm. or, um, and, and actually <laughs> we've, we've launched, um, free masterclasses and uh, pen pal scheme, which is kind of an exchange scheme. Um, so there's lots of opportunities there um, for writers. So if you aren't already a member, please do check that out. Um, but uh, uh, during lockdown, we kind of started to have some conversations with Sky um, and that's how the, the screenplay award kind of came about. Yes, and um, those conversations with Sky um, came about in part due to the writers that we'd already been working with and um, people like David Judge, who you're going to be hearing from in a little bit. Um, and that awareness that actually um, writers who work in the theatre have got a lot to offer the TV world, but that it can be quite difficult to understand 
how to have the conversations across the two formats and how to get to know people in both TV and theatre. Um, so we wanted to find a way to bridge that gap and create a lot of um, freedom of movement between the two worlds and acknowledge that stories that work really well in one format can work really well in another in another format. So that's really how the idea behind screenplay was born. And um, now to give you the facts about screenplay, um, it's an award for writers from underrepresented communities. We're going to be uh, choosing two writers that those two writers are each going to receive a bursary of £10,250. That bursary is going to support those writers to develop a 20 minute screenplay and a 70 minute stage play based around the same idea. We're really interested to explore how one story could grow differently for the stage and for the screen. Um, and over the course of 2021, the writers will be working with both Sky Studios and um, Box of Tricks to develop that play and workshop it, develop the play and the screenplay and workshop it with actors. And then those two stories in those two formats will be presented um, as rehearsed readings. So they'll get they'll get an airing, they'll get some response. And... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 we've just um going to talk to Donna now just a little bit about that partnership and what it means for Sky Studios and what um, what excites them about the Screenplay Award. Donna. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think for us at Sky Studios, it was just really exciting to start working with Box of Tricks because we, like as, as uh, Adam mentioned, like we're already working with David Judge um, who could come through Box of Tricks. We're also working with Kofi Kufo. So, um, you know, we've kind of long admired them and part of what we do at Sky Studios um, in sort of for innovation is that we're really looking at different creative companies across the north and individuals just trying to find where that new talent is and also you know it doesn't matter if you've come from theatre um, or you know or poetry or any other background if you've got a story to tell then we'd love to work with you and um, so it just felt like such a perfect opportunity because we were already circling the same people and we also you know we so encourage new talent and such a lot of what we do is trying to nurture new screenplay talent especially if they have different backgrounds so for us, we thought, well, this this will just be brilliant. And and as Hannah said, you know, an idea, as long as it's a strong, characterful idea, let's just see where it goes from um, from stage or screen. So the idea is that I'd be working um, with the people that get through editorially. Fantastic, thanks, Doug. Um, great. So we've, we're joined today um, by both Ella and David. Now, Ella and David have both worked with us um, as writers, um, as playwrights, um, but they've also made that transition, as Donna was kind of alluding to with David, it, it, into, the, into the world of TV. Um, so um, I guess my first question for you, Ella, is about your, that journey, how you kind of made that journey into TV and um, what it's like, really, in terms of writing for telly and what have you. Um, yeah, so I, I, my roots were in theatre, so I started off, uh, like Adam said, in, in, in theatre, and, um, yeah, I knew I wanted to get into TV, I applied for a lot of things, I, um, did a scheme with Kudos, and I did the Doctor's Shadow Scheme, um, both of those kind of created, well, more so with the Kudos one, created uh, good relationships, but never actually got got to that stage of, oh, you know, there's my TV credit. And then um, I did, I applied to Coronation Street through a scheme that they run, and Emmerdale do it as well, um, um, the original Voices scheme. Um, and just kind of went from there, really, had a trial, um and did a trial script um spent a lot of time in the spent six weeks in the story office getting to know how it works and I just I knew nothing so honestly absolutely nothing I do remember the um the producer there kind of going Ella can you just do da -da -da to 
to so to episode and I just went do do what to it I just had no idea and I just had to they just wanted that that strand breaking down but I just had no clue and uh yeah I wrote a script for them a trial script for them and they came back and said oh we really like it but it's not gritty enough so sorry and I went oh okay and I said well can I not just write a grittier script the story wasn't gritty it was Gail and Eileen fighting on the street it was funny um so they said yeah so I did another one so it they didn't offer that second one to me it was me going please can I do another one and it was my time and and you know that second one it wasn't paid and stuff but I'm so glad I did it and then they offered me three episodes then they offered me three more then a new producer took over and said, well, I don't really know you, so you have to do three more. And, um, <laughs> and then they gave me a contract, which was uh, amazing. And then, yeah, I'm still there now. And then I've done, um, sorry, I don't know how, my, how long I went to speak about. And I've done other stuff with, um, with BBC. I'm working with BBC as well at the moment on a couple of projects. And um, I'm writing on the new series of Mallory Towers for CBBC, which I'm really excited about because I love Mallory Towers. <laughs> Amazing, thank I you. I am also thank excited you. about that. <laughs> <laughs> and David, if I put the same question to you about that kind of that transition from from writing plays into writing TV. Yeah, I think I think for me the the, the big gulf was going into writing um, at all. I think once I started writing with you guys and you invited me in to write a play, which was nothing to do with a comp, nothing to do with a production. It was just we think you've got a way of telling stories and a voice. Uh, I think I'd resisted that for a while because I was so obsessed with acting. And I, I suppose what I realised is when I wrote my first play, um, naturally being, um, being BAME, um, there was a lot more opportunities for me to apply for. So I, I joined Channel 4 Screenwriters in um, 2017. And all of a sudden I felt kind of disabled as a storyteller because I'd been working in new writing in new theatre and I'd seen stories told on a page via a script for a play. I understood the freedom, I understood the subtext, I understood the journey of telling the story via that that vessel in a kind of way. And then all of a sudden I was introduced into Channel 4 with the, this is industry, business of business. And there's so many hoops to jump through. And the story that you want to tell has got to be manipulated or got to be orchestrated in such a way that it kind of made me um, run away from it and think, oh, I'm not just a storyteller. I've got to tell a story in that kind of way. And personally, I think everyone has a story in them and everyone has a top story to tell. It's human nature. It's just how you find the vessel in which to tell that story. So when I started um, emceeing on a street corner, I didn't realize I was writing poetry. And then when I started writing poetry, I didn't realize I was writing plays. And then when I was writing plays, I realized well, I was discovering my voice and actually discovering the fact that I have got stories to tell. It's just what's the best vessel for it. And then I got introduced to Sky through Sparkplug, which was um, a three, three to four years on from the beginning of my journey with you guys. And the encouragement from working with Sky was, yeah, we're gonna develop a TV show, but we're gonna start from scratch and there's no, here's how it's been done before and here's what needs to be done. It's what best serves the world, what best serves the story and what best serves the character. So for me, the transition into writing for telly would be really scary if I thought I was writing for telly. The thing is, is that there's just another way for me to tell this story that I might not have been introduced to yet. Um, and that's how, that's how I've kind of handled my way into all the things I'm doing at the moment. I'm also, I've just completed, on uh, yesterday I handed in my, um, my um, sample um, episode for Coronation Street as part of the original voices thing, um, which was a big massive drag during lockdown and stuff. But that was really great because they kept me on board and kept giving me a little bit of money to survive during this horrible time and allowed me to keep thinking I was an artist, even writing for something that's so intimidating. So I, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> um, but yeah <laughs> amazing yeah no it really does it does thank you david um so yeah we'd, we'd, one of the things that we kind of want to talk about a bit today as well as kind of launching the event um sorry launching the award was actually just talk about um pictures and actually what it is because i think i know that the idea of pitching a, a script can be quite intimidating quite scary quite daunting um and actually i think if uh box tricks and sky studios if we kind of just talk a little bit about what we're looking for and then we'll kind of talk to Ella and David about your top tips and um, that'd be that'd be fantastic yeah. so I guess from our point of view what, what excites us about a uh, pitch is that it um, conveys an idea it conveys a story that you want to tell but in a way and in a voice that reflects that story and reflects you as an individual um, what we're really keen to stress is there isn't a kind of a one-size-fits-all yeah. template for pitching but that actually 
use that one page, that 500 words in whatever way you want to, or indeed, you know, a video um, application, if that's, if that's your preferred uh, means. But like yeah. for, for us, it's about capturing the spirit of something. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we, we often working with playwrights ask for them to submit treatments and um, a treatment is, is different to a pitch because it can often be quite a lot longer. But what really excites me about asking playwrights and poets and writers and screenwriters to put their ideas on the page in, a, in an introductory form as a treatment or a pitch is the possibility for surprise that actually people can lay it out in a way that's just really exciting on the page or include bits of dialogue or quotes from like, journalists or other poets or things or even images that actually it, it's about it gets me excited about how that story would then develop. Um, yes, I want to hear the details of who those characters are, what the location is, where that story is going to take me. But actually, if I can get an insight into how that story might be told and what my experience of that story would be as, um, as a creative helping to build it or as an audience member experiencing it and watching it, um, that's where I get really excited and that's where I go, oh, I've never heard a voice like this before. And it's really important for us that um, screenplay is about the voice of the writer. Um, you know, this is, a, this is an opportunity to develop something and to collaborate and to go on a journey. We don't, we're not looking for a the beautifully final polished script that you've been working on. Actually, we're looking for an idea that might be brand new. You might not even have had it yet. You know, you've got till the 6th of November. It might come, you know, at some point at the end of this month. That's okay. It's about where that journey could take us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Donna, what, what is it that kind of, what gets you excited about a pitch or an idea? Um, I mean, I would say everything that you guys have said, absolutely the same. Um, I think for me, I will ultimately always look for stories where not only you can really see the writer's voice um, and what's important to them and what they're passionate about, but ultimately a story with big characters and big heart. Like I'm always gonna look at something and want to care. Um, from a Sky perspective, um, I think the thing to remember with us is that because it is a script subscription service, um, we're always looking for something that you wouldn't see anywhere else. So it really is an original take, that it's provocative, that even if it's something that isn't the newest idea, how are you going to take it like to a different angle how are you gonna as Hannah said how are you gonna surprise us so it's always just elevating the ordinary I would also say as well fantastic thank, thank you. you thank you that's amazing um and uh Ella if I could turn to you next and um if we can if you could get your perspective on how you approach a pitch and putting that together and what what tips you've got um when you when you kind of Set, on, set off on that journey yeah sure um so yeah when Hannah and Adam asked me to do this um I asked all of the producers that I've kind of worked with and currently working with what their you know one thing that they look for in a pitch and I thought oh it's going to be my job done but actually they all came back and said pretty much the same one thing which was passion um so number one I would just say be passionate about your idea um just love what you're writing about and show that in your pitch and other people will love it as well. Um, yeah, show how excited you are about it um, and that will make the, the reader excited. Um, my second top tip would be be pacey and clear and don't waffle on. I say this, I'm going to probably waffle loads now, but um, short, precise sentences, I think, um, especially with, with the award, it's one page, isn't it? So every sentence kind of wants to earn its place on that page. You don't say the same thing twice, which I'm probably doing as I speak. Um, and yeah, with that in mind, um, I always think about the rule of three. Um, so kind of your protagonist is smart, bunny, sexy. Your antagonist is nasty, sly, stinky. Never more than three, so it doesn't get as messy. So it's just to the point. Um, yeah. Um, Number four, this isn't an academic piece of writing. Um, so I always like, I mean, this this is absolutely my, how I approach something, but 
I'm very conversational in my pitches. I'm quite lighthearted. I, I'll be quite fun. Um, that does lead into my number five, though, in that tone should reflect tone. So if you're writing a comedy, make that pitch funny. You know, if you're, you know, going back to what Donna said, if, you, if you're writing, you know, a tragic love story, then we we want to be sad in that pitch. We want, you know, we, we want to care. So, yeah, just that tone um, reflecting that. Um, yeah, this one is stolen from Sally Wainwright, actually, but um, I don't care. She's probably not on here right now. Um, and it's basically write your episode one as if it's episode three. So um, for this, obviously, this is a shorter uh, pitch that you'd be doing. Um, but yeah, just get straight in there. Don't waste your time on the setup and who's who. Just get into the action. What's going on? Um, and and yeah, back to why do we care, I suppose. Um, B, uh, number seven is, oh God, I'm dropping it. Be uh, specific. So if, if you know the place that you're setting, your show if you know it if it's your hometown then then tell us that tell us something that we don't know tell us something that's surprising that only you could know about that place um yeah um yeah this is quite so we'll create uh banging characters um and kind of make sure that they're all different really don't have two characters doing the same thing and unless that's your point but just make sure that they're all yeah, kind of doing different things, basically. Um, uh, you might want to think about the uh, POV of the piece. Um, what's our way in and who's, whose eyes are we seeing this world through? Um, and again, Donna just said this, uh, what's unique about this show? How is it different to anything we've seen before? And that doesn't mean that it can't be a kind of story of the week procedural show it can but but why is it different to every other story of the week procedural um and that's 10 but I've got a bonus tip of um this is some people like to do some people don't but um why you um I've recently I put this in because I've recently been asked to do this because I'm doing an adaptation so I suppose it's slightly different but I hate doing it. I hate kind of going, well, I should do this because, you know, but even if it's just a sentence I, that just conveys why you absolutely, you are the only person who can write this show in this brilliant way. Um, I just think sometimes people, producers respond really well to that. Um, yes. And I'm sorry if I've spoken too fast. I'm a bit nervous. Um, that's my 11 top tips. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Thank you, Ella. Thanks, that's Ella. fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, all all wonderful, and that that passion one, that number one one, I couldn't I couldn't agree, agree with more. Yeah, yeah. Um, David. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if Ella's got access to my emails or not, because every single one of mine, Ella's just mentioned there. So I think I think you've been nicking mine there. <laughs> I want to joke in, but yeah, really, really covered it, and like I'm nowhere near mastered um, a pitch yet. Um, so. I suppose all, all I could give you is like things that have stuck with me so far on my journey, um, which kind of goes into approaching the pitch, speaking to the people directly, and also writing the app if you get to that, that kind of stage as well. So my first thing is just be big, be brave, and be honest. Um, and that kind of marries into, it's your voice, you're right, you're, you're there for, for a reason, it's because of you. And be brave of that, and don't, don't hide behind a budget, don't hide behind a big name, behind a competition. Write the story you want to write, regardless of how little it may seem or how grand it may seem. Um, make, put everything into it, yeah, don't hide behind anything. Um, same again, um, why are you telling this story now? Who's the story for and what you want to do with it? Just try and keep that building the momentum throughout your pitch. Um, otherwise, if it gets a bit too busy people will lose the theme of it like me I, I write a lot about identity but because I'm a mixed race person people want to know whether it's about sexuality or whether it's about race and sometimes I can clog up a pitch when I get a bit um sporadic with that and it's really really important to be clear of what you, what you want to do who you're speaking for and, and what you want the episode to do um I often get told at like page seven or eight that's where the story starts David and I'm like, oh, okay, because I'm so much more interested in, every, in everything else. So like a little kind of thing I heard about that is um, 
The story starts when the stranger comes to town, like in a cowboy and Western film, do you know? Um, none of it matters until that guy rides in horseback and everyone goes, ooh. So try and like find the metaphor for that in your story and try and make, yeah, that's where the drama starts. Um, what I realize is like, yeah, oh yeah, it's great. Let's get a lot of different people, underrepresented people, but the people who exist in the business don't talk like me. So I can get really excited and I can talk, but sometimes I need a translator because they haven't got a clue about my reference points or what I'm talking about. So try and watch and read as much as possible, even if you don't like it, because it'll give you little um, reference points to be able to create a dialogue with whoever, you, whoever you're being creative with. Um, and I've often thought I've, I, I, I've, I've gone quiet in a room when I've not been able to take part in that kind of stuff or lost my idea when I've not been able to bulldoze it through with all these brilliant references and this actor could play that and you know this guy from this is I just don't, always feel like I'm missing something not having them tools at my um, disposal um this is one I made up when I was at Channel 4 Screenwriters but I almost got a, a, a round of applause for it we had someone in coming in telling us about stamping your mark all the way throughout the episode and I was like like when you buy a Ben Sherman shirt and all the buttons say Ben Sherman. And like when you buy one from Primark and they don't, and it was like exactly like that, David, make sure all your buttons um, have their tag. So yeah, even if it's a stage direction, even if it's a small character, even if it's something that we might not visit again, give them that stamp, be big, be brave, be honest with them, regardless of how small they might seem in your world. Um, above all, be yourself, write for yourself and enjoy, enjoy yourself. If not, like, go and do a job that you don't enjoy because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll get paid more. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, there we go. <laughs> yeah, and uh, on that note, if you want to retrain in cyber, you know, here's the yeah. good opportunities. <laughs> in the world. Um, good, amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, that's wonderful tips. Uh, really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so we are now approaching the... Uh, Q and A section of uh, this event. Today's proceedings. Yes. Um, so, um, Max, uh, do we have any ch chat questions as yet? We do. I've got three for you. So fantastic. Far. If, you, if in the meantime, guys, if you do want to stick any more in chat, or if you'd rather ask in person, um, you can raise your hand. There's a digital way of raising your hand if you've got a question you want to ask, um, or you could start um, turning your videos back on. Then we'll know that you want to ask a question. Yeah, sort of but yeah, Max. Um, Yep, so the first question is for David specifically, and that is, were you ever under pressure to write things and twist the wider story perhaps into something that you felt uncomfortable with or was not authentic? Oh, um, no, but I think there was a danger of that in the industry. That's why I've chose to work with the people that I've worked with, um, particularly um, Sky, Donna and Hannah and Adam. Um, I think I've always been um, vocal about that when in the room about why I want to write my story and the story I don't want to write. And I try and be that person from day one, from square one, like I say about be big, be honest, be brave, be that with yourself as well. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think I could have done the wrong work a lot earlier if I would have succumbed to that pressure. Cool. Great. Amazing. Um, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. No, what a great question. What a great answer. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so the next question is, um, if, if I do a video pitch rather than a written one, how long would the video need to be? Uh, it's uh, basically up to three minutes is what we're saying. Uh, and that, that, that it, basically the video pitch is for um, if you've got specific access requirements that mean that the written word is a challenge for you or you find kind of condensing your ideas into 500 words too difficult. Or it's an obstacle to you applying. Yeah. Then we welcome those video applications. But we, we're sort of saying about three minutes. That's what we felt like a 500 word pitch would be uh, on, in video form. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so this is a question for David, Ella and Donna. Um, and the question is, does it help to reference other shows as a benchmark for, exa uh, for an example of what your work would be like? Um, for, for instance, train spotting meets the sound of music. Uh, so <laughs> yes, using existing works as an idea to sort of try and pitch what your piece is about. Love that question. Um, I'm happy to start on that one. Um, I personally find it helpful. Um, I mean, I would definitely like to watch Trade and Spot in with uh, Sound of Music. So I'm all <laughs> that. Um, but I guess the one thing I would just be mindful of is it does still need to be 
an original idea. So don't find yourself um, giving examples and then actually your pitch is very similar to those ones. So if it's a, just a really quick illustration, that's great, but just be mindful that you're still supposed to be as original as you possibly can be. Fantastic, thank you. And Ella? Um, yeah, I was actually, I was hoping that Donna would go first because I, I in my pitches I do, um, I don't tend to do the so-and-so meet so-and-so, um, but I will often say taking inspiration from or something like that. But I was interested to see what Donna would say there because I, I have kind of gone, am I doing the right thing with that? Because you do get different answers sometimes. So that's good to know. Thank you. And David? Yeah, I think it was in one of my top tips, but as well, I don't think, you know, it shouldn't be like fusion restaurant. It should be like, oh, do you know what our high street needs? It needs this meets that, because that's not the idea. What it should be, it should be a way of um, of, of pushing, th of, of making clear your idea. It should be the second description. You know, if someone hasn't got, when you jam in with someone and you go, oh, it's like this and it's like that and it's like that. And if, if you lose someone, it should just be reinforcing your vision of the original idea. It shouldn't be to, to break the ice or to pitch that, oh, what the West End needs right now, what Sky needs, is this, no, um, I totally agree, so yeah, 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 it should just be used as a dialogue and not actually for the idea for your, your, your story. Fantastic, thank, thank you. you. Great, uh, any other questions on chat, Max? Uh, yeah, there's a, a couple, um, but let's go to, um, I think, Victoria Taylor-Roberts, who's on yeah. uh, video right now, let's, if she can ask her a question, that'd be great. Um, you want me to speak? Ah, hello. Um, I was just wondering about the referencing thing um, and whether or not you date yourself. So, for example, you've got a zany comedy that's a bit off the wall and you go, oh, you know, Green Wing. And someone goes, oh, like 25 years ago. Um, I'm really worried about um, whether or not to go for tone or whether or not to try and find the most current thing to reference. Yeah, that's a great question. Could I put that one to you, Donna? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, for me, I think it's whatever show best describes the tone. So I personally wouldn't mind because I think some shows are so classic that you know instantly. So I'd rather you did that than just picked the most current thing that sort of did what you wanted it to do. But again, as long as you've still got the originality there and that's just a little bit of a, a handy, helpful thing to, to include, that's fine. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink that. Brilliant, thanks. Great, right, thank you. Well, thank you for your question. Max, um, got, yeah, I've got quite a few. <laughs> so, <laughs> just bear with me. Um, okay, so can we apply as a writing partnership? Yes, this this is a question that's coming already on the emails, isn't it? It is, yes. So um, we've actually had a couple of variants of this question. Um, yes, you are welcome to apply as a writing, writing partnership if both writing partners are eligible. However, that you, that writing partnership will still just count as one writer. So that bursary that would go to would be split between the two of you. That process would be the two of you going on that to write something as a as a pair. Um, we've also had we've had a variant of that question elsewhere of people saying that they have previously been in a writing partnership, and both writers wanted to submit that co-written piece as an example of their writing we would advise against that because actually it's very difficult to judge the individual two individual voices separately on a combined piece of writing um but yes if you feel like you two as your individual writers are um, create a stronger unique exciting innovative voice as a pair then we're happy to receive that application cool great uh, next question is, does it have to be a northern story and does it have to be a big story? That's that's a good, really good question. We're not, um, in terms of the, the the emphasis on the north, we're looking to support northern writers. What that doesn't mean is that you have to tell us a northern story. Um, we're not looking for, you know, a thousand pictures on, uh, with involved flat caps and in fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. We want to, we want to hear st exciting stories that reflect uh, the world in which we live today um, and that doesn't necessarily mean a thousand pictures on COVID either um, so, <laughs> so but yeah in terms of that northernness um, it doesn't have to be set in the north it doesn't have to be um, about the north it doesn't have to be 
uh, about even northern characters. What we're looking for is to support northern uh, voices and, um, and and nurture those 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 voices yeah. over the course of the bursary. In terms of a big story, um, I could kind of like it depends what your definition of big is. Um, you know, do you, like yes and no. It can be a huge story with twenty seven people in. And forty-five on, locations, for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, or it can be a story that is big in scope and theme and emotions. You can tell an epic story with three people or you know, one. Um, so no, there's no you know there's no restrictions in terms of size or story or theme and um, whatever is exciting to you and whatever is going to change the reader and the viewer. And the audience member, what you know, what's going to change your audience? Mm. You know, that I'd say that would be my definition of mm. big. Did you want to add anything to that, Donna? Uh, no, no, I think I think Hannah's really summed that up. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, any other questions, Max? Uh, yes, uh, so <laughs> um, <laughs> no one wants to speak apparently today. That's fine. Uh, so, one next question is: Would you prefer one script sample or a multiple script excerpts up to a total of thirty pages? What would be best? Um, we, we, yeah, we've we've kind of talked about this and we addressed it in the FAQs that both are are Acceptable. accepted. Um, for us, it's about what you think best reflects your voice, and if that is if you've got kind of say two or three short scripts that actually show different aspects of you and you feel that best reflects your voice then great or if you feel like it's a 30 page extract from a, a, a current script or even a, a 30 pages of a of a script that best reflects your voice then I, that that's what i would go for it's what we're trying to get capture is um the essence of you as a writer not not necessarily um your ability to kind of meet the the required page count <laughs> do you know what i mean um so yeah okay, we've got a question from uh Ginny next yeah hi guys hi, hi Ginny. Ginny. hello sorry I, <clears throat> i've got to go in and facilitate in a sec so I'm, I'm gagging in a bit i just wondered about language um i'm really interested especially because of our multicultural communities and stuff about using non-english speaking characters as well as english speaking characters um I think that's exciting to do on TV and screen, but uh, is that, is there any, I don't know, any constrictions with to do with that? No, <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. not. Um, we've, we've kind of been a bit mindful of that um, in terms of who we thought about for our pool of readers. Uh, we've been mindful of trying to um, make sure that we've got some readers who are fluent in languages other than English. So that actually if there's, um, you know, if that, if we need to think about that in terms of the pitch or indeed in terms of the writing sample that's fine but no um it's it's exciting to see yeah. lots of languages in in art and in stories so yeah go for it Donna. yeah absolutely i think as long as um the clarity is still there i wouldn't mind at all great okay. thank you and just uh, also accessibility so um i know that this is a um uh, it, you know, it's a priority on on stage these days. What about TV, Donna? What 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 are the um, you know, are the provision for accessibility for visually impaired people, and you know, all, all the different aspects in terms of TV as well. I mean, honestly, we would do whatever it takes to make it as inclusive as possible. And um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that at all. All right, okay. If anything, that's what we will be and should be championing so yeah please don't worry about that thank you thanks so much this has been really great i've got to go now but thank you thanks, thanks, thanks Jenny. Jenny. take bye. care bye um, just so you know, there's still quite a lot of questions, so it might be an idea if we ask people to email in any extra questions, just looking at the time. Is that okay? Yeah, are there, are there any burning questions that are kind of time sensitive or for D David or Ella? I think David's gone. Oh, yes, he had an interview, didn't he? Uh, but yeah, for, for Ella or Donna or... Sorry, I put you on the spot there, Max. No David, pressure. No, um... Okay, in that case, I think we are going to have to um, wrap things up because, uh, um, yeah, we're running out of time. But um, thank you so much to all of you for joining us. We can't tell you how excited we are to kind of <coughs> open the submission window next week and start hearing your ideas and your pictures um, and all those stories. Um, 
thank you so much to everyone who who's talked today and who's uh, joined us in launching the award. Um, as Max said, if you have got any questions and haven't been answered today, our apologies for running out of time. Um, better time management next time. Um, but if you do, you can just email screenplay at boxfortrickstheatre.co.uk. Max is going to stick that into the to chat right room. Now. Yeah. And, um, and likewise, have you already put the link in, Max, for for the yeah the award yes, detail? The link is in. Yeah, so so uh, uh, everything is kind of covered in our FAQs and what have you as well. So if, if anything outside of that does come up, feel free to kind of email us. But yes, thank you so much for joining us today, Donna, Ella, uh, Max, and Alex. Uh, Alex absolutely, uh, thanks for joining us. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, have, have a, a fantastic day. afternoon and take Bye. care now. Bye. Cheers.